Hey guys, uh, my name is Vladimir Kolesnikov, aka Occipital Optic on Instagram, and today I'd like to talk to you guys about the exposure triangle and breaking out of auto mode. So one of the first things that I wanted to cover is uh, the different modes on the mode dial on your camera. Um, and then go over the pros and cons of each mode uh, as well as a better understanding of the three components of the exposure triangle and uh, how they affect the amount of light hitting your image as well as the effects on the image. So first things first is if you have a camera, you're probably shooting on, you've probably seen this wheel here, this wheel right here, and it's got a bunch of different settings on it. It's got auto, it's got a little flash symbol with an arrow through it. That means auto, no flash. Uh, it has probably like a scene setting and then some user presets and this sectioned off area MASP, MASP which stands for uh, manual aperture shutter and program um yeah so first things first uh the exposure triangle is consisting of three things so first you have your shutter speed which is probably the most obvious it's uh how long your shutter is open and how long the sensor is exposed to light on mirrorless cameras it's basically just how long the sensor is turned on um, you have your aperture, which is this thing in the lens, which gets either, let's see if it's going to focus, smaller, bigger, or smaller, bigger, smaller. Uh, then you have your ISO, which is basically how sensitive the sensor is to the light that it's exposed to. All right, so those three things, shutter, aperture, and ISO, need to come out to zero. Uh, so if you have a shutter speed or aperture that ends up in a plus one, that means you're overexposed. And if you end up with minus one, that means you're underexposed. Uh, so if we look at these diagrams here, uh, we can see how increasing the shutter or increasing these values can impact the amount of light hitting your image. So if we have a low shutter speed, we're letting in a lot of light. And the more we increase our shutter speed, the less light we're letting in. So what that means is if your images are coming out really, really dark, you may want to consider lowering your shutter speed. Uh, just don't lower it too much because that can cause motion blur. I recommend roughly around 1 125th of a second. Uh, anything below that, you're kind of risking getting uh, blurry pictures. Um, next we have our aperture. So the lower our aperture value, the more light we're letting in. And uh, the more we increase our aperture, the less light we're letting in. So again, if you're getting dark images, you may want to consider lowering your aperture. I like to float somewhere around f 3.2, 3.5, or as low as possible. Um, another thing is if you increase your f-stop or aperture then you're getting more of the image in focus and if you want to create a separation between your subject and your background then you want to go for a lower aperture because that's going to make less of the image in focus. Uh, next we're moving on to ISO. So ISO is pretty straightforward. The lower the ISO, the darker the image, the higher the ISO, the lighter the final image is going to be. So again, if you're getting dark images, consider raising your ISO. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind, just like with slowing down our shutter speed, uh, the more we increase our ISO, the grainier our image tends to become. So if you're getting really grainy images, it's possible that you're shooting at an ISO of something above like 2000 that's usually when you start to see grain in pictures 
Um, usually I like to keep mine around 100 to 400 because that's like a good uh, film range. And anything above that is kind of just trying to compensate for poor lighting conditions. So um, those are the different components of the exposure triangle. I hope that helped. Now let's look at the different exposure modes. Okay, so now that we went through the different variables and how uh, increasing or decreasing them affects the amount of light, uh, we can go through all the different dials on the camera. Um, so you have an aperture dial right here on the front. Let's see if it's going to focus on it. Well, that's it right here. That's usually the aperture dial. Uh, if you have a smaller camera, sometimes you get the aperture dial by pressing a button and using the dial on the back. The shutter dial right here. So if you hold down a button and adjust the shutter, sometimes on smaller cameras, that's how you adjust the aperture. Um, but basically, that's these two dials, the front aperture, the back shutter. And then you have a dial over here or sometimes like over here that controls all the different camera modes so you have auto mode which is full automatic you have uh, auto with no flash uh, you have your scene settings which basically just picks a priority based on the scene that you're shooting and then you have your manual and semi-manual modes right here. So um, auto mode is useful if you're just starting out with photography, if you just wanna take pictures, uh, snapshots, whatever. If you just wanna walk around and not really worry about exposure settings, uh, auto is a great starting point. It's just gonna take a uh, light reading of the scene that you're shooting and kind of try to calculate the most balanced exposure setting. Uh, something, you know, with a very middle shutter speed, a very middle aperture and a middle ISO to give you a very uh, balanced exposure. Um, the scene setting is kind of similar. It's gonna give you the most balanced exposure based on the scene that you're shooting. So if you set it to like sport mode, it's gonna prioritize higher shutter speeds. Or if you set it to like a macro mode, it's gonna prioritize lower apertures to give that kind of like blurry macro effect. And um, if you choose sunset, it's gonna like underexpose a little bit to give you like a silhouette or something. Um, these modes are really useful if you just kind of want to go out and shoot and not worry about the settings but the one downside to fully automatic modes is that they can be very unpredictable um, because the light meter in your camera isn't always 100 percent accurate and uh, sometimes the settings that it's going to choose are not going to give you the picture that you're trying to get and it might give you unreliable results and as a photographer, reliability is something super, 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 super important. So that's auto mode. Um, moving out of auto mode, you have your semi-automatic or semi-manual modes. And that's uh, these settings here. Your uh, P mode, which is program automatic, uh, your shutter priority, and then your aperture priority. So um, P mode basically is a program auto and the camera is going to give you its, uh, its readout of what it thinks is the best exposure calculation, but then you as the photographer can adjust the shutter and aperture based on your liking and is still gonna keep all the other elements balanced according to that. Uh, some people swear by program auto saying that it's probably the best camera mode they've ever used. 
Uh, it's the most effective or efficient way of switching different uh, apertures and shutters and getting the exposure that they want. Um, next you have shutter priority. So basically you can adjust the shutter with this dial here and the camera is going to calculate the aperture and ISO that are going to give you the, the, um, the balanced uh, exposure based on that shutter speed. So think about it like you pick one variable and you can just lock it off and all the others kind of get adjusted to ensure that that one stays where it is. Uh, same for aperture. If you want to set your camera to aperture priority mode, uh, you can set your aperture to a certain level and then wherever you go, the camera is always going to keep that aperture and adjust the shutter and ISO instead. Um, and then lastly you have manual mode where you control everything from ISO, shutter, and aperture and you really need to use that light meter to see where your exposure is. Um, I use manual control pretty frequently myself but I do think that there are certain advantages to shooting in aperture or shutter priority especially if you're moving through dynamic scenes where uh, the light changes drastically so I don't know it just saves time to uh, have your aperture if you want to be controlling the depth of field or whatever at a certain level or if you're trying to shoot a certain type of scene that requires a, a shutter speed you have it set to that shutter speed and then you just move around your environment and the camera adjusts everything else to that. It's just one less thing to think about when you're taking your picture. Um, also you can uh, nowadays set a minimum shutter speed and a maximum ISO where your camera is going to stay within those ranges of increments to give you that exposure. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you learned something and yeah, I mean, lastly, I just want to ask like, if you have a preferred shooting mode, uh, what is it and, uh, why? And, uh, let me know. Yeah. Um, otherwise subscribe to this, uh, blog which I'm going to hopefully update every week. Uh, follow me on Instagram. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Bye.